Staying with your breath while you're sitting here with your eyes closed is one thing. Staying with it as you go through the day is something else. But you want to be able to erase um, as much of that distinction as you can. In other words, remind yourself that even though your eyes are open and you're engaged with other people, you can still be with the breath. At the very least, you can be with a sense of the breath energy in the body, and that gives you a foundation. Use that foundation, as the Buddha said, as a post to have some restraint over your senses. Something hits you in the eye, or hits you in the ear, or hits you in the nose or in the tongue that you don't like. If you don't take care of that immediately, it's going to grow. It grows from irritation to aversion, from aversion it goes to anger, and from anger it can grow to ill will. So you want to get it when it's still weak. And as the Buddha said, if you don't have the body as your anchor, as your post as you go through the day, you tend to get pulled around by your emotions, you're pulled around by your reactions to what you see and hear. So in this way, the meditation protects your restraint of the senses, and the restraint of the senses protects your meditation. If you're letting these animals wander around in the course of the day, then the time comes to pen them up, and when you're going to sit and meditate, it's going to take quite a long while. So you want to catch them quickly. Keep the mind on a short leash. Don't let it be on a long leash. So when you come to meditate, you don't have to clean things out so much. And then while you're going through the day, don't leave the meditation, because it's your post, so that you can maintain some restraint over the senses and not get pulled away by whichever animal is the strongest. So think of these two things working together. You want to protect your meditation when you go home? Okay, work on restraint of the senses. Look at what you're looking at and what you're listening to and the way you react to things. And not only react to them, but also why you go out looking for things to begin with. Who's, do who's doing the looking? When you've got these two qualities working together, the sense of being anchored in the breath and restrained over the senses, they both develop momentum. And that's how you help to create the environment for your meditation, that if you're not in the monastery, you've got to be the one who creates the environment. And you do that by your actions, and particularly you do that by how you manage your, the way you deal with your senses. So keep that thought uppermost in mind, that the two pra practices have to protect each other for both of them to develop.